Happy Friday. Hey, Rick. We made it another week. We are ready to rock and roll here. The yes, Rick we Health are. Estate show. Just kind of uh, give people an overview of what's going on in our Arizona market. And Carlton's happy about it right there. Uh, it's good to have us make it to the show so we don't have to use our stunt doubles. Yeah. Um, as we're, you know, got to keep your I mind. I swear to God. We have you know, what up. happens to a week? I mean, I, every time it seems like we're just you and I are on every other day. It's just the way weeks are flying lately. It is. It is. And uh, remind the audience, thank you for tuning in. We have been doing this. This is our fourth year now. Yeah, we got to be one of the longest running uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting how long we've been doing it. I had hair then. <laughs> <laughs> so so we're going to get started. Um, you know, my headline says boring. Now that I hope you didn't take that to mean that, that you're boring, Pat. Um, yeah. or that I'm boring, but, uh, it's the, you know, this was a week where in the beginning of the week we had the PPI can, uh, index came in hotter, which is what, what's it called? The producer's price index. Mm -hmm. And then the CPI consumer price index came in better than expected. So the market kind of reacted to oh, a big yawn, right? Yeah, it was a much anticipated number. Um, it's almost as though the market was, you know, um, waiting for that big crescendo, you know, which way were rates going to go? And we saw it just kind of move along. Um, everybody was building up a big, big, you know, crescendo as far as what, what's going to happen with the rates. And you look back right now, I mean, um, this is the three month, I mean, this is the three month, five and a half year coupon, right? Yep. Give me an example. Here, here we were back in uh, February 20th, uh, closed at 98.72, right? Where we're at 98.78, you know, the last three months. As far as the 5.5% 30-year, you know, the MBS mortgage-backed security market, the 5.5% per coupon. So you see these little spurts, you know, uh, rates obviously going um, down here with prices going up. We got little spurts within all this this pattern of activity so within a you know a two or three month period you might be able to get a little bit better rate but it's been kind of stuck in that you know the rates were hitting high sevens but they've softened up and you know low sevens it's been a nice little it's been back and forth based on what numbers come out next week or the following week and we had obviously the fed speak a lot of feds coming out and saying well doesn't seem like we're gonna see too many rate hikes uh and we'll see what we have and for uh, what's on the on the table for the next couple months. And it's just it's no, more of the same. It's more of the yeah, same. Yeah, I read just an article today you know, from Mortgage Newsletter saying uh, uh, they're going to call it the bonds 11 day holiday. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's there's literally nothing going on next week. No, so there's nothing that's going to move them unless unless somebody from the central bank says something. Nothing's going on, and that's kind of what we're seeing in our now. This is all good stuff. So, you know, volatility is is the kiss of death in this business. And, and boy, you can see here with our Cromford Market Index, for people who don't know, this is a proprietary index that measures supply and demand in the Phoenix area. And we're at 110. We are officially a balanced market. It's not a, in total. And I'm going to show you on a heat map where that's not the case in some parts of the valley. So we're sitting here at 110. 110 is officially right there. If you're above 110, um, then it's considered a seller's market. If you're below it, it's a buyer's market. So places like Chandler and Gilbert are way above 110. Places like Buckeye and Maricopa, which are in the outlying areas, are clearly the advantage for sellers. All of that's driven by new construction. So you see that line there, Pat? It's uh, it's it's pretty flat, just like my red line here. There we go. That's kind of flat. Then we look at our active listings. It's not going up. It's going up ever so slightly like maybe 100 homes a week. Talking to Jason up in the Pacific Northwest this week, that's not the case. He says they're getting new listings like crazy. And uh, this is our active listing map here I wanted to share with you, Pat. It's got. It's interesting when you look by price range. So let's take all the price ranges out of here. All the dots disappeared. Do we have anything in the 300 to 400,000 range? And I click on that, and then that's where um, they are. So they're out there, but some of these are manufactured homes and condos. 
So what do we see in the four hundred to five hundred thousand dollar range? Where are they? And again, a major concentration up here in the surprise area in Peoria, where there's a lot of new construction. And this map's not letting me go down to Maricopa. Uh, it does, but it's kind of cumbersome. And then if you get over one million, uh, let's see, where's that number here? Over one million. Here we go. You can see it's pretty much concentrated right there in Phoenix and Scottsdale. A few pockets, Northeast Mesa, um, South Chandler, and parts of Gilbert are where the million dollar homes are. Now, here's the fun one. You've talked about this before. This is the heat map mm -hmm. ratio. I like this map. In other words, are, is it a cold market or hot market? So if you go to Surprise, it's got a contract ratio of 43. It's considered balanced and warm. That's that green color. You go to Waddell, balanced and warm. You go to parts of Phoenix, it's considered hot. Scottsdale, balanced and warm. But look at this. Get down to Chandler. Frenzy. You list your house in Chandler? It's going to sell, my friends. Gilbert, hot, 92 contract ratio. In this part of Gilbert, this part, Hot and hot, hot. So Gilbert's doing well. Uh, so is Levine. And uh, Fountain Hills, uh, balanced. So it, it shows in Santan ba Valley, surprisingly, comes in as hot. I say surprisingly because a lot of building going on out there. So and mm -hmm. the builds are, um, they're, you know, they're, they're flying off the shelf. So this is where the valley is in relationship to whether or not homes are moving or not. So I thought that was a very eye-opening one. The 70 goes, wonder what percentage of new builds versus resales presume new builds much higher of late. They are. I can dig up that number for you, Stephanie. Um, I don't think I can find it right here, but um, there is a new report. It's not new. Um, have you heard of Tom Ruff, uh, Pat? Mm-hmm. He, he writes for our local multiple listing service, and he, he comes out with a stat report once a month. So for our viewers here, um, whether you're live or on the restream, if you go to our website, which is right here, which is rickhelps.com, and in the top, you can download the recent market report right here. If you click on that tab, and when you click on that tab, it's going to take you to this report and you can download this and have it. And I'm going to be putting it up there. Uh, the most recent one every, every month when I get it, I'll share it with you. So it's showing our sold listings. Look at that. They've gone up. See that mm -hmm. new listings. They're kind of flat, which is what I've been seeing on my seven day moving average right here. We spiked up a little bit, came back down. Now we're leveling off. So that coincides with what I'm seeing with, Thomas Ruff, active listings, um, kind of flat. Again, nothing earth shattering there. Under contract pending, uh, actually had a slight dip down. And then uh, uh, months of supply absorption rate. So you, you can get drunk on these numbers. New list pricing, 677. Median price, average price. Um, I'm trying to see here, Stephanie, if it's actually got anything in relationship to uh, um, uh, new builds. And then there's commentary here that uh, that he adds. So again, go to my website, rickhelps.com. Click on that. You can download that report and you can have it in your own little inbox there. And Quentin here, do you see affordability of returning to our market? If so, how do you think it will play out? Uh, that's a national question. Are we ever going to see affordability play out anywhere? Um, affordability is a national problem. I yeah. know I get a lot of comments that saying, you know, California is driving up our prices. Well, uh, what's going on in Omaha, Nebraska? That's not California. So yeah, Wisconsin, affordability, Wisconsin. yeah, affordability is a problem. Um, how we're going to shake out of it. I don't know. Um, it'll have to show up as we get more homes for sale. It's, it's both a shortage and a demographic problem at this yep. stage in baby boomers lives. We're usually downsizing. That's a normal progression. Well, we're not now. 
usually get that smaller house. Well, you get a smaller house now, the payment's probably going to be more than the bigger house you're in, unless, as in a lot of cases, baby boomers have got close to paying off their homes. Um, they don't want to pick up another mortgage, so they're just like, yeah, it's too much house, but I got room for the grandkids. Well, another so, thing is, too, I think, uh, you know, once again, I've said this in some uh, different uh, viewings, is that uh, all this, what we're talking about is still COVID-related in 2020. We're still stuck into the, um, you know, the supply demand, the demographics have changed, how people live, where they live has changed. Everything's changed the last, since 2020. And it just basically, we're kind of like the crash of 08, 09. It took us four or five years to get out of that situation. I believe it's four or five years, 2000, maybe next year, things start to shake out. You know, they have a supply demand. They can obviously loosen up regulations. Uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. Supply, you know, increasing supply, uh, loosening up regulations on building, build, uh, building supplies, you know, the tariffs on Canadian, you know, wood, you know, the lumber, you know, help loosening up there. Um, you know, the interest well, rates. Well, if you look at the outlying areas. Inflation, so talking, inflation too. Inflation, I mean, yeah. the bottom line is, so, you know, inflation has gone up for the average, as I've said, you know, we've said, talked about this, that the average family, average family of four or five people, you know, kids and the, you know, the mom and dad, their their costs of living have gone up 15, 1600 hours plus a month just in living. That all bodes into the payment of being able to buy a house. And I think the affordability issue would, it's it's multifaceted. It's just not one thing. I think interest rates would have a big dramatic effect. Like that's why you see such interest rate sensitivity when rates do go down, people can. I just had a, I had a gentleman that I was w working with um, quoted six, you know, high sixes on a, on a jumbo loan. Uh, no, it wasn't jumbo. It was about seven hundred thousand dollar loan, six and seven eighths. Well, then pulled it up today. The same lender, you know, actually yesterday, and we were looking at six, you know, like around six and a quarter. It was a four hundred dollar a month difference. I mean, we're we're talking big payment, but that was still a four hundred dollars a month difference in just a couple of days. Well, if you look at the outlying areas, when we're talking about supply and demand, we're saying why is it a buyer's market and why are prices not going up? out in those areas. Simple. They're building more homes. Why yeah. are prices going up in Phoenix, Chandler and Gilbert? They're not building more homes. They don't have room. No. So it's, that's your best local example, supply and demand. So when will affordability happen? Well, yeah, it could happen if there's really high unemployment. Um, you know, if we have a economic crunch, but, but high unemployment and high interest rates normally don't end up hand in hand. So no. if we end up with high unemployment, you can expect the central bank to pull back again. That's usually when they do it. They always lower rates during a recession. Um, and a recession also doesn't usually entail high unemployment. But um, so, you know, affordability can can happen with multiple, multiple different ways. And depends on the country, too, or the state. You know, a state can have an industry that's just fallen off the face of the earth. And like California did when the defense industry was was dying out there and Arizona used to go up and down like crazy. Well, we didn't have too much job diversity out here. You know, we used to just be tourism, golf, agriculture, yeah, golf and uh and healthcare. Well, now we've our manufacturing base has grown exponentially. So that helps cushion us from these ups and downs. Look at Vegas, okay? Vegas goes up and down way more than Arizona. Why? You need walking around money to go to Vegas. So if the rest of the economy is having a tough time, people are going to save their money. They're not going to Vegas. So Vegas tends to run up and down about a, a year to 18 month lag to us. So if everything mm -hmm. goes really south now, Vegas is cut off. You know, they're, nobody's going to Vegas. I'm going to save my money, not going to the shows, not going to gamble. And then once things get better, now I've got to save my money to go to Vegas. That takes me about another year and a half. Yep. So they they're they're a one horse one horse. What do they call it? One 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 trick, one, one trick pony. One trick pony. That's all I got. Thank you. Yes, that uh, <laughs> yeah, I need you to need you to help me with that. And not only did it help me, but I got to say that the uh, the crowd is 
the audience is glad you did that. So, Hi, Rick here. If you're thinking about locating to the Phoenix area or any of the surrounding communities, don't forget to punch that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you can be up to speed on what's going on in our market. Jessica and I are happy to help anybody that's looking to relocate to the Valley of the Sun. All of our contact information is in the description below. Um, I think if I look out of Arizona, I all I can do is say, well, what are the numbers looking like today in all of those measurements? Inventory is not going up. Unemployment's not going up. Um, so, um, and Quentin's asking, not saying there'd be a crash, but did you see the 2008 crash coming or was it a surprise to you? Saw it coming with the headlights right in front of me, and I'll tell you why. And, and I, I I'll, I'll that. be honest with you. I, I mean, not that uh, I totally saw it coming, but I in um, September of 05, was, uh, uh, oh, uh, September of uh, 05, I, I saw I saw two signs. I saw, and I, I remember literally making the phone calls. My friend, there was a, uh, one program. I think I, I've stated this before. There was a non-owner. There was a program that one of the lenders came out with. Um, basically, it was a you had to have just a 600 FICO score. You could do a you could buy an investment property, non-owner occupied property, stated income with a 600 FICO score, 100. Yeah. percent No money to buy an investment property. That was the other. And then the other one was I had this, I had this office in this, uh, up in the Bank of America building. Every Saturday, they um, had these fix and flips you know, seminars and the place, the place was packed, packed. And I called my friend. I said, we hit the top of the market. And I was golf. The third thing is I was golfing with a buddy of mine who was, who was uh, one of the higher, uh, he was a sales manager with uh, one of the uh, subprime lenders. And he said, we were golfing in July. He said, the stock was at 48. I remember it was 48. He goes, in less than 12 months, our stock is going to be worthless. This, this market's going to crash. It's going to crash hard. And, in March of 07, I got cut off. I had one lender. I had a, I had a deal that I had to place with. It was three invest, three three uh, Bowers on the same loan. Boyfriend, girlfriend, and then brother of the one of the, of the girlfriend. They all had like 580 FICO scores. They were doing 100% financing. That Friday afternoon, I called one lender. They said, nope, we're shutting that program down. Nope, we're shutting that program down. I called like 20, 25 lenders, and they said, we're shutting that program down. We're, we're not getting any funding. I'm, I'm sitting in the office wondering, Something's going on. Something's going on big time. And I called one last lender about quarter of five. He said, get me the file by Monday morning. I've got to have the file in my office by eight o'clock Monday morning or else we're not, you're not going to do this loan program. And we saw, I just saw it going down, down very quick. And I had a buddy of mine call me in the middle of 2000, actually seven. He said, well, at Lawrence, you, the economist from the NAR said, we're going to be out of this in about a year. And I told him, I go, Jonas, it's going to take three to five years to get out of this. And it was about three yeah. to four years before we got out of that. He, he called me the following year. And he says, man, you you were spot on. <laughs> He's still a lot of this day says, the bad, I, on top of the bad loan products. I was just simply looking at the number of homes we were building in 2006 versus the number of people that were moving here. It was so yeah. lopsided. It was just yeah. incredibly lopsided. And my dad was a broker in Washington state. And I called him, I go, dad, this doesn't look, make sense. I mean, we don't have 200,000 people a month moving here, but they're building 40,000 homes are hitting the market every month. Yeah. And I said, something's going to break. Now I sold my house, Quentin in 2006, I got out and, and can you not see it coming? Well, let's think about this houses crashed. The market crashed in 2008, right? Because of two things. One, the loan products were absolute crap. Oh, they were they, terrible. So when they're people terrible. have a loan, their your loan reset to a higher payment. There, there's nobody out there. I'm gonna say nobody. There's hardly nobody. anybody out there now. They're probably, about, probably about three to four percent of the market. Yeah, they're gonna wake up. Go, oh, my God, my payments higher. But then there's don't ignore this. These are extremes, and I'm gonna blow this up here. Here, see this number right here. This is October 2007. Look at the number of listings we had. I just showed you we have 15,000 now. Um, on, on Cromford, we've are actually sitting about 17,008, the way I track it off the MLS, 58,000 listings. We hadn't crashed yet. There's your canary no. in the coal mine right there. Normal is 26,000. So when I say I follow inventory, I'll again, go back to the number here of active listings. 
and say, it ain't happening if we're staying flat. No. This is going to have to go parabolic. It's going to have to go up here. It's going to have to go up all the way up to here. Yeah. For us to see a huge, huge effect in prices. Will that happen? It could. It it could. I mean, but it, it's, I, I guarantee from, that fast. from a lending standpoint, though, I don't see it from a lending standpoint because, you know, people get frustrated with the fact that, you know, when I do a loan, they want every I, every T crossed, every I dotted, every T crossed. And they did, that did not happen. I saw it. I mean, I, I literally lived it, breathed it for the last 25 years in 07, 08, 09. I had secretaries in 05 call me and say, hey, you know, I want to buy this $450,000 home. I only make $3,000 a month, but just put my state income at $7,000 or $8,000. I refused very uh, more than a handful of loans because I was not, I did not feel good writing a loan for somebody that basically could not afford it. No. I said, you know, I could write all, your income, whatever you want on the sheet. Can you still afford it? And they just, it's like, no, I, I actually, I had one lady. I, I just remember one night, 7.30 at night, I had her detail everything. And her, she was making 3000 and her and her debt, debts would have been 2700 I said, you, you can't afford this. <laughs> it's just, it's just, well, yeah, I had a, I had a sales manager come into my office when I was, uh, you know, my previous career. And he goes, Hey Rick, I'm buying this condo. I want you to look at this. What do you think? And he puts on the numbers and I go, no, I, I, I said, I'm not a realtor, but I, I I'm just going to tell you that you're signing up for failure. He goes, why? And I go, well, look how much the loan payment's going to be in two years. I mean, yeah, yeah, you're getting this teaser rate right now, but in two years, can you afford this? Oh, well, uh, it'll be worth more than I can sell it. And I go, maybe. But I don't yeah. think so. I said, yeah. I, I think prices are headed down because of the inventory that we have. And this payment was like 1600 a month, which in 2000, this was 2006, was pretty extreme, especially for a yeah. condo. And it was going to go to 2900 yeah. just like that, two years. The feeling was, because they were being lied to, saying, well, like, you know, you sell it. Don't worry about it. If you can't refinance it, I mean, holy cow, you just moved in now and it's worth 30000 more than it was two months ago. And so everybody bought into that, signed up and wheels fell off the way. What, what do you mean? I can't sell it. Oh, yeah. why? Well, I guess there's two for sale now. Just because we had the crash back in 07, 08, I just, like you said, I, I just keep beating the drum to a, a blloo in the face that this, the dynamics are solely different. The supply yeah. demand, that was a the demographics, yeah. huh? the demographics have changed. Um, yeah. Are we going to see, we could see softening certainly. But uh, the crash, I just, you know. Well, this time is different. You'll see it coming if there's another rate increase or unemployment increasing each month. You, if you could see softening in pricing. I just showed you on the increase in listings. If you're going to see a real downward pressure, that's going to have to go up. But, hey, we have a guest here that just popped in. I see her down on the bottom, my illustrious broker oh, Jessica, wow. you're out you're out in the wind what's going on i i know i well i ended up stopping by to check out a new build um and it's windier than i thought it was it doesn't look so windy when you're driving around all day long but now that i'm standing out on the lot i went i don't i don't know if i can pull this off the superstitions are freaking amazing out here Oh, yeah, the view's out. The you're out in the Far Valley. East Valley. So. Yeah. Hey, Ricky, I see you in the green room. We'll pull you up in a couple minutes here. Thank you. Um, so what's going on out there? Are you in a new build community? Yeah, I'm in a new build community. Um, I had a buyer that said, hey, what's all this hubbub about this East Valley building? And so we went out two weekends ago, Mother's Day weekend. Oh, last weekend. And I'm, I'm just doing an update for them, seeing what the incentives and all that are doing after the holiday weekend so they're still pushing those new bills are still pushing the the buy downs and it's it's not so much more affordable right now 3.99 start prices decent decent haven't seen those in a long time <laughs> well and so are they selling you know what the lot that she wanted is still available, but it's got the views and all of the ones that were listed under that are, are gone. 
so it's been seven days. So they had three in it, three lots with builds that are going to be done for the end of May closings. And uh, they only have one left, and it's because it's above 400000 So where are you at, Jessica? You're east, at east. Way East Mesa, borderline uh, Mesa and Pinal County. You buy Apache yeah. Junction or like uh, the yeah. Superstition Mountains? Yep, yep. It's Mer it's off of Meridian. Okay, wait. So east, we have east, our east, own east. boots on the ground person now. Yeah. yeah. We don't need so, that other guy. So rates didn't do what everybody in the world was expecting on Wednesday either. Is that what I just heard? That's yep. right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, hey Jessica, old, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull in Richie here. Do you mind if I no can not you at all stick around? Okay. Richie, hey. welcome. Howdy. You're you, you sent me a private message and said I'm now a hit at all the cocktail parties. So oh yeah, I, appreciate <laughs> I watch you guys all the time. That's great. So so when when you're at a party and somebody says, uh, um, "Hey, how's the market?" Or I hear about the market. You you quickly run to that that part of the room, right? So uh, I'll pull up one of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you at, Richie? Where what I'm part in space up, uh, Power McDowell. Okay. Yep, yep. Just watching the market, kind of saving money, renting a room right now until I can afford to buy a house. Basically. Well, cool. It's fun to have you. You're actually the first person that's uh, that's dropped in like this for us. So I think that's oh. great. I'm glad well, you clicked yeah. on the link. So thanks we, for having. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fun. There, and uh, go ahead, Pat. Is there anything that you're interested in or just talking wise, topic wise? Being a, um, uh, so a a potential buyer, would you want us to hit on eventually or down the road? Or I mean, what do you what do you kind of what's what's your uh, question marks? Well, I've had questions about um, if you can get a, can you get a mortgage loan if you haven't filed your taxes, and I don't know the answer. Uh, the quick the fast answer is no. Um, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, there's different programs out there, but they're not non qualified. Mm. Um, you know you. There's, they call them non-QM, non-qualified mortgages. They're not Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Um, you can do, there's some stated income loans out there. There's one, but the rates are higher. You know, oh, it's not okay. going to be a pretty rate. Uh, you're looking probably in the nines, eight and a half nines, you know. Uh, so, it's up there. <laughs> yeah. It, it's going to yeah. make you pay. There's, there's, there's niche programs out there, but yeah, you know, the best thing is you obviously want, are you self-employed or? No, I I, uh, I have a well half and half. I have a uh, two jobs now, clean pools yeah. and uh, work in a factory. <laughs> cool. We could yeah, yeah. we talk on offline too if you have any questions. You know on that. Yeah, appreciate it. We got a got a question here too. It says, "What percentage of new builds have a pool?" It looks like a lot of new builds don't have a pool. They don't have a pool because they they usually have um, incentives from the pool company for you to choose your own pool. Like they, you still see the pool packages out there, Jessica. No. In fact, most builders, it, it, you know, back in used to. before the crash, yeah, used to, and lending used to allow it. But I would say unless if it's custom or semi-custom, the there's, I've rarely, seen, I don't think I've seen it in the last 10 years. Not that that's it's not where, out there. That's where I think resales have, I mean, just my two cents where that's where I think resales have a bigger advantage over new builds is if somebody wants a pool because... You know, quite frankly, you and I, you and Rick both know that when a house gets appraised, you know, on a resale, there the value of a pool is not that dramatic. Correct me if I'm wrong. It it isn't. I mean, it, but it depends. I mean, it, it's you know, having a pool. So let's say you got a house that's four hundred fifty thousand. Okay, one has a pool, one doesn't. Um, it's it, it only adds value to you personally if you're looking for a pool. Does it yeah. add any value appraisal wise? No. Mm -mm. Well, that's what I mean. That's why I'm saying you're not getting from an appraisal. But if you're out to get a new build and go out and get a new pool, that new pool is going to cost you fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Correct me if I'm wrong. Minimum. <laughs> you know. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you're really dead, I mean, does that make sense? If you're looking for you know a pool, if you're dead set, a resale is almost your really intrinsic value there. If you're set yeah, on, a pool. I mean, that's that's the way to do it. Get resale pools already built. It's already been maintained. You know, you get it inspected, you're, you're in good shape. It's kind of, yeah. it's almost, now some solar adds value if it's owned, but not if it's leased. Yeah. 
Solar is very complicated math. Yeah. But I think apples to apples, if you're looking at the pure value and appraisal process, no, it doesn't really add anything. Adventure here says, personally, I wouldn't want a pool and I wish I could filter houses with no pools. Um, you actually you can be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. In a search, right? Yeah. Uh, at least it does on our side. So we can look into that to make sure. Yeah. You guys yeah, have on that. our site, you can you can search properties and you can go and you can I'm I'm pulling it up here now and you can you can uh, pull down a filter and say I you know no pool. So uh, Lou here says Pat's right. Most people want a house in the pool because it costs fifty grand. I'm glad it didn't cost that much. I have money put in. <laughs> I'm one for one today. Yeah, that's it. Uh, there's probably a I can turn on the applause line again. Yikes, so yikes, yikes. <laughs> So, <laughs> but, uh, so, Hey, uh, Richie, let me ask you, do you have a time frame in mind when you're looking at this market, you're saying, um, do you, are you waiting for something to adjust or are you just, is it just a matter of saving more money or you think I'm just going to be comfortable renting, uh, the market be damned. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of both. Uh, if I have, if I can save up enough money in a fast enough time to put a decent down on the house where my payment is, uh, 2,500 or less, then I'm okay with uh, making a purchase. But, uh, right now I, um, I guess you could say, I'm just waiting to see what the election does. I'm not sure how much that matters, but, uh, um, if it helps, uh, then I'll, and, and the, and the prices are right in the future, then I'll be able to pull the trigger. But I'm actually, uh, the houses I'm looking at are in Apache junction on the one, 1.2 acre lots. Cause I'd like to get some land on this next purchase I make. So that's the most important feature. Well, um, uh, they've heard me say this here before the election doesn't matter. Okay. It, it actually makes a hair stand up in the back of my neck. Um, does it? That's, okay. which is the only place I have hair now, but yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it doesn't matter. It's never swayed the, the general direction of housing. Okay. If, if housing was going up and there's election, it's still going up. If it was going down. It, uh, you never see a chart go. We have a new president. Whoop. The only thing it changes is generally the stock market goes up immediately after the election, not because they're happy, with either party, they're just damn glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good so, to know. Quentin says, so you're not alone. Everybody's kind of, everybody wants the, the same, same thing and afford a bit. Look, I got three boys. Uh, oldest is 38, youngest is 31. They can't afford a house. Yeah. So I'm not liking this market either, folks. Um, can I change it? No. Does that mean it's a bad market? Well, it's a bad market for my boys. Um, but there are people that can afford it that are still buying. Like when we look at that heat map, it's still still doing quite well. And Jessica's out there seeing in the new build that they're flying off the shelf. And I think out where she's at is where things are really going to start flying. There's so much development that's coming out there, not just houses, but data centers, warehouses, distribution facilities, manufacturing, and uh, and then the views of those superstitions behind you. Um, but they have to show that they have a 100 year supply of water out there. Mm. And so if they don't, they're not going to get the permits, but that was one of the biggest land auctions we had was out there by Apache junction. Now Apache junction has kind of two different Apache junctions, Apache yeah. junction up by main street <laughs> and then yeah. out in the desert with the views and, and, uh, you know, the, um, Lost Dutchman State Park, that Apache Jump, the nice part. So, but uh, so adventure, uh, do go in on the website, rickhelps.com. And if you have problems filtering that you don't want to pull, let me know. I can give you a hand. So, well, Richie, thanks for jumping in here and being the first one to uh, join us. We're going to let you yeah. go here. We'll hang on a couple more minutes. But yeah, if you got any questions, let me know. You know, if you got any, you know, tighten up your, keep an eye on just quick tips. Give, you know, make sure your credit's tightened up, you know, uh, credit cards, stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, um, a lot of people don't know what they can get sources from down payment too. they, you know, there's, there's your retirement plan. You can get gifted funds from relatives, a, a relative, you know, there's certain other options. So, you know, if you got any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Well, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Hey, Have thanks for dropping in, Richie. Yeah. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Man. All right. Well, that was fun. So, so you're Jessica, you're out there and you're seeing um, that there's actually some homes in the 300 range. And they're flying off the shelf. Um, what do you recommend, people? I mean, you're out there kind of previewing it right now. The commute is pretty long, so if you're working in Phoenix, 
probably don't want to buy out there, right? Right, right. You know, it's it's a to each buyer beware <laughs> because uh, the commute is it's going to add an extra ten. Well, do you remember? Santan Valley, when Santan Valley oh. in 2003, four, and they, it was the up and most coming, latest and greatest, and then homes sold for, you know, at 150, 170, and then the market tanked, and they were down to 50 and $60,000 uh, mm-hmm. a door. And, you know, that commute, although it's getting better with the freeways and stuff that are, so a lot of this stuff, I think that's what I, I am impressed with the, the freeways and the development on the highways that's been done through the cities because it's opened up the traffic into Santan Valley. So majority of the construction that's appealing right now is off of all of those roads going into Santan Valley. So I do believe, I believe, you know, over the next few years, it's definitely more affordable out here. You're still 15, 20 minutes away from, you know, well, 25, 30 minutes away from the airport, right? Yeah, at least. At least, yeah. Santan was like one lane in, one lane out. It was, you yeah. know, people wanted to go show house in Santan. like, you Ellsworth. sure you want to look down there? <laughs> I you still know, say that. That's Let's Maricopa. drive if you're in rush hour before you, com- before you sign on the line. <laughs> well, that, but that's great advice. I mean, no matter where you're buying, you know, go out there at night, look at it. Drive out there during rush hour. Drive in in the morning commute if you can do it, or have somebody do it for you. Yeah, um, you know that's what the inspection period for. It's not just about looking at the frame, look at the roof, and everything. You know, you got to inspect the whole area, and you can say, you know what, I really don't like it out here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel the contract, and you know, yeah. do that before you pay for an appraisal. And we have a comment here. What are your thoughts about the recent home inspection drama regarding new home builders? Have you heard anything? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I mean, I've, there's always going to be a builder here and there that tries to draw a line in the sand that says, you know, they're not going to allow inspectors to come in because of liability. But our friend Dylan, who inspects new builds, uh, he said the last time I interviewed him, he has not run into a problem. He likes to do pre-drywall inspections so that he can see the wiring and the plumbing and all of the inside stuff uh, before the home's built. And so he hasn't had a problem. He's run into, like anything, one or two that, you know, yeah, the drywall uh, is not going up for two weeks. And he, he goes out there in a week and it's done. Um, so, <laughs> and uh, the YouTube shorts inspector guy, yes, Quentin, you all know Dylan. He's, he's funny. Did you see the one the other day about the rattlesnake? It wasn't his, but there was a guy walking out the front door, a realtor, and and he goes, wow, this is a fancy doorbell. And there's a rattlesnake wrapped around the, the hose pip. <laughs> Yuck. Well, Jessica, thanks for jumping in. And yeah, uh, for having I know me. you've got a, a community you set up north, too, that you want to show us later. I do. Yes. Do you want to know the well, name of it? Or should we support yeah. it? Oh, tell us the name. Uh, Tara Vita, one of our followers, um, had kind of expressed interest in it. So I popped in there and did two or three different tours uh, last week. And I'm, I'm in love. I want to share it with the world. <laughs> I would never, yeah. leave, you know, from the East Valley, but I definitely think that people should know about it. Well, let's go up there with the cameras and let's, uh, let's just make a, um, a very specific video just about that, about that neighborhood. So I think that'd be fun. So, yeah. yep. all right. Yeah, well, you have a well, next week, uh, week. A quick, uh, quick announcement too, Rick. Uh, uh, we're going to have that uh, just to tell people that we're going to have this uh, program. This uh, gentleman from Knock, it's a program. Yes. Uh, I'm going to have the rep join us next Friday to talk about the program. In a nutshell, it allows you to buy a house if you're if you own a house that's got equity and you want to buy another house. It allows you to buy that new house without having a contingency on the on the old house. It allows you to gives you up to six months to sell. Your old house, uh, there's a fee involved, but it's there's a lot of lot of upside to this program that I'm going to have the rep uh, join us probably next Friday. It'll it'll loosen up some people that are like they feel like they're stuck that they hey I have to sell my house before I buy a new house. It's got some nice little features to it that if people want to talk up there, we can talk about next week with him. Yeah, that'll be nice because I know I have some questions. So, is it a bridge loan? It's yeah, it's a, it's it's a 
technically a bridge loan, but there's a feature. Uh, it's yeah, basically a bridge loan in, in, in a nutshell, but um, you don't have to make the payment on your old house. Like I said, we'll go into it next week, talk to have Brandon uh, go over it for about 10 minutes uh, when he's got time next Friday. Yeah, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, and I also want to ask the people too, and please put your comments in the comment section. Um, if uh, especially on the replay, we do this live every Friday at three o'clock, and we're we're kicking around. Is that really the best time for you? Um, is it, or is Friday at three a bad time? Because if we get closer to summer, uh, people are going to start leaving town on Fridays, going to you know Flagstaff or Prescott or the White Mountains, and probably going to be on the road at three o'clock. So I'm thinking, is it? Thursday at five o'clock, a better time. Thursday at six, Wednesday, you know, doing it once a week because maybe Friday at three might not be optimal for the for the audience. So let me know in the uh, comments section of the video and uh, we'll take a look at it and see if we're going to uh, make a change or not. So because I, I mean, I'm I'm just wired for Friday at three o'clock. It's like my big event for the week. And then so if we change it, I'll go through withdrawals and, and then and, and, and then. Uh, not to mention, Pat will probably just forget. Uh, Half the hour <laughs> early. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it'll be fun. We'll make it work no matter what. Well, everybody, thank you and have a great Friday and take on the rest of the weekend. Be safe out there. Take care. See you guys.